Now I have the pleasure to introduce our next speaker. He will talk about wide band gap technology and he will explain what that is because I don't know it yet. And he will talk about the efficiency, potential and application readiness map. Ronald Bruninger is leading the research program electricity technology from the Swiss Federal Office of Energy for many, many years. He has been involved in many, many prestigious projects. Currently, he is engaged in the EMSA project, Electric Motor Systems Annex, cooperation project with the, the IEA, and more recently with the Power Electronic Conversion Technology Annex, PECTA. Ronald is a very good colleague from us. I welcome Roland to the floor. Thank you very much, Konrad, for this nice introduction. Uh, hello to everybody. I would like to introduce to you a new program, which is part of what I just will tell you, and is uh, actually mainly a new technology, so-called wideband gap technology. I will give you a short introduction, then I will tell you a little bit about the mainframe of it, and then some of the results which uh, we have achieved in the first phase, and then a little outlook what we are going to do in the next phase. Now, very short introduction. When you see where the current, where, where the electricity is produced and where it goes to the end, it takes a long way. From the production side, which might be solar, uh, PV, wind, whatsoever, then over the transmission, distribution system, maybe some storages, and in the end, to the end, use equipment. And there you see a lot of end-use equipment which are using motors or power electronics. And actually, we are talking about power electronics, which is everywhere, actually, in almost all devices. And therefore, also the efficiency of these devices, and particularly of the power electronics, is most relevant. Now, just a short introduction of the framework. Uh, there is a TCP, Technology Collaboration Program of the IEA. There are a lot of them, but this is just the one. It's called 4E and stands for Energy Efficient End Use Equipment. And it has been established 2008. At the moment, 14 countries and the EU Commission is part of it. On the slides, you see all the participants. And within this uh, TCP, we have four annexes which have been established. One is EMSA, the electric motor system, which you as a skilled audience of motor systems are well aware of it. Then we have ETNA, electronic device and networks annexes. That's more or less ICT oriented. We have SSL, solid state lightning annex, which was us with uh, LED and LED technologies. And the new one, the little new baby, that's PECTA, Power Electronic Conversion Technology Annex. Uh, you see there the link where you can find a lot of information about this uh, 4E TCP. And as I said, PECTA, Power Electronic Conversion Technology Annex, is one of the four annexes under this TCP 4E umbrella. Four countries have decided to be an active member. That's Switzerland, Austria, Sweden, and Denmark. You have seen uh, on the slides also the organizational structure. And there you see we had in the phase one, which was mainly uh, driven last year and uh, some months ago, the task one, which bosses with efficiency potential in power electronic appliances, and the task two, the roadmaps for power devices. Now, uh, I would like to give you some results which we have elaborated. First of all, wind band gap, an overview. Uh, there are very promising abilities which we think are given with wide band gap. One, of course, is the efficiency. So a lot uh, improvement of efficiency uh, will be done with this wide band gap technology. We have also an improved power density. We have also, as, uh, the technology is also very fast, so we have also fast responses uh, with this technology. We have increased blocking voltage capability, 
and actually it is suitable for all range of power. And of course, at the end, it should also uh, give us CO2 reduction. So this is the multiple benefit uh, of which we have elaborated when we are going in that direction. Now, what we did is also to learn more when we can expect this technology in the market. And of course, some of these technologies are already in place, but it depends heavily on the appliances. Therefore, we uh, searched worldwide about different available roadmaps about this technology. And here you see a list of the different roadmaps we really analyzed. And out of this, PECTA developed so-called ARMS. ARMS stands for Application Readiness Map and shows you when is which, mark, uh, which uh, application in which market situation. And here you see uh, one example. This is the application readiness map for three major appliances. The first is industry automation and robotics. The second is large drives. And the third is ICT data centers. And here you see, actually, we leveled that out uh, based on the application and also based on the uh, voltage level. And there you see that we can here uh, estimate when which application might be available with this new uh, wideband gap technology. We also did uh, show that in a similar graph. This graph is more application oriented and there is actually the same information but based on the technology. Uh, wideband gap has at the moment mainly two major material oriented uh, devices. That's first of all gall gallium nitrate, so that's why this is called, called GAN based application readiness map. So that's the GAN arm and we also have silicium carbide, that's the SIC a based application readiness map which shows then exactly the same but in relation with the silicon carbide technology. Now what we also did, we did some preliminary studies about the potential of energy savings if this technology, this wideband gap technology will be introduced in different uh, applications. Here you see the graph and you see that uh, when we sum that up, for example, when we have the data centers, we estimate about almost 30 terawatt hours a year savings. If we all count together the laptops, cell phones, and tablets, we again account about uh, eight terawatt hours. The PV, of course, the PV has always a uh, converter. If we there would change all the PVs available with uh, Wideband gap technology would save another 10 terawatt hours. And very promising is also the wind application. Wind, we have highlighted a little bit here, not only because it is a huge sum of savings, but also because the IEA outlook for renewable energy uh, predicts a high share of uh, PV and particularly also wind. So here we do not see at the moment the potential savings of the motor and motor-driven systems. This, I come on, on this later stage. Here you see a little bit the PECTA positioning itself uh, along the chain, along the industrial value chain. You see, if you have this technology, you have, first of all, the research and development of semiconductors, so on the material side. Then these are put together with the material manufacturers who then have the semiconductors. You put this together to devices or modules. These are then gone to a system manufacturer for a power supply, for a converter or whatsoever. And then at the end, you have a customer. And there you see where PECTA tries to interact. Mainly, it's a lot of information exchange with industry, with academic people, but as well also try to expedite the market penetration, the market entrance of particular applications, applications where we think it would be helpful that governments do uh, supporting activities. 
here also you see actually that uh, in the different applications where which uh, attitude is relevant. So for example, you see for efficiency, the power supply is very relevant, UPS a little bit less, but actually all or most of the application efficiency is very relevant. The weight or the size, there are some where it is very important, uh, particularly when you have mobiles like trails, uh, trains or, or electrical vehicles, then you have the operating temperature, switching frequency and also the costs. The cost is one of a very important issue because uh, it is still rather expensive to use this technology as it is a new one. We did elaborate. You don't have to, to, to read this in detail. You can read it in the report, which I show you later where it is available. But we tried to analyze what are the major possibilities to stimulate the market from a government perspective, that can be different uh, issues, that can be uh, economic in, in, instruments, that can be information, that can be education, that can be policy support, regulation mechanisms, whatsoever. And we did elaborate this and laid it out. We did not come to a conclusion at the moment for the first phase, but is now layout and we will, based on this, and continue this work in the second Phase. Uh, here also a little bit summarized what are the challenges which is uh, relevant and important to penetrate the market. One issue is that the temperature can be increased, which is very good, but the gate voltage are limited. The reliability is at the moment not very well explored. There are still some uncertainties compared with silicium-based technology, you do not know exactly how long this new technology lasts, what are the problems, what are challenges, so this has to be elaborated further on. Then with this technology, you also can have new packages, new topologies. There it is not sure yet what is the best, so there is also some research needed. And one issue which is here also listed are the costs. It's still rather cost-intensive, this technology and that's at the moment also one hurdle to prevent uh, mass market entrance of this technology. Also standardization is, is, is an issue because uh, as it is new technology we don't have very much standardization, uh, uh, standardization possibilities at the moment. Now I'm coming to the phase two there you see these different tasks we have uh, established. One is the completion and updating of the available efficiency figures. I have showed you the pie, and we will continue with that. And as I said before, motors and motor-driven systems will be part of this task A that we find out what are the efficiency potential. Then we are looking with task B about life cycle assessment. With task C, we will revish, revise and elaborate this uh, application readiness map which I introduced. In task D, we will try to elaborate po concrete policy measures and mapping those with the applications on a timeline. So we take the arm and look what is now appropriate as policy measures. Task E, we try to lay a little bit the ground for doing standardizations uh, at the moment. Uh, we try to elaborate standards for efficient measurements. Wideband gap technology has the attitude that it has very steep, uh, how do you say it, flanks, uh, steep, uh, uh, where, where you uh, have influencing, the, where, with which you do influence the, the, the system, like the motor, for example, and we try to lay out this in, in this task E. And in task F, we buy available power supplies on the market, which have a gun uh, technology inside, and we try to measure it and try to compare it with traditional uh, power supplies. That's the outlook. 
And here you see the organizational structure. We have an academic advisory group. We have an industrial advisory group. We have, of course, the chair, the operating agent, management committee. And uh, the little boxes in between, these are reflecting the different tasks. And there on the slides, you see also who is responsible. We have a country support and have a company or an institute who does the whole work. That's it, and all the details you can find in this uh, report, which has been launched, I think, May of this year. Feel free to download it, and if you have any further questions, you can put it to my email, or maybe you can have it now on the screen. Thank you very much, and I hand over to Konrad. Thank you very much, Roland Brüniger. Very interesting presentation talking about the future, 2030, it's the new age. I was wondering when you had on your uh, timeline the year 2030, the materials we are talking about, silicium carbide and gallium nitride, they are more or less known. Why does it take so long to make commercially available products? Uh, where there are still some challenges. One challenge is, as I said before, the costs. It's still rather expensive to bring it in the market, and it is a very price-sensitive market. Specifically, if you have, as comparison, the traditional silicium-based technology, which is working perfectly, which is uh, reliable. And there is also other issues uh, which I mentioned. One just comes in my mind is also the, the stability of the system, uh, whether it is reliable, it lasts the time which the manufacturer has to uh, guarantee. And uh, there are other issues also which are not known in all the applications which are foreseen for. There are, as I said, some already in the market available, but there are still some which are unsure, uh, mainly when you go to higher uh, voltages and higher currencies as well. Yeah. Uh, in the field of motor systems, I think the application will be mainly in the large section of electronics in the variable frequency drives. In your graphs, you showed large drives. Why not the millions of smaller drives? Uh, we will also include that it has just been the issue that as our application ready map uh, based on the ECPE roadmap, we have taken more or less there uh, as a first glance. But as I said in another task, we will develop that and we go beyond that, of course. That's also an issue. And maybe I also mentioned these uh, little power supplies which you have for mobiles or, or laptops. Uh, these are also little devices, actually, but due to the mass, it can uh, contribute a substantial part concerning efficiency. We have a question. How do the wideband gap technology perform in standby? <laughs> That's a very good question. Uh, I can't answer it yet, but this is one issue which we will also uh, analyze in the, in the next steps. Because we think that uh, in the on mode, there is the better efficiency improvement, but we also have to analyze what happens in the standby. A lot of devices are in the standby off, so they don't switch, actually and then it doesn't matter. But we want to investigate as well in this area because we want to be sure that, that just what I said is also reflecting the reality. Last question. Do you see a positive, that means lowering price development for the materials, the silicium carbide or the gallium nitride yes. in the next five or 10 years? Yes, I'm sure. I mean, Becta wants to contribute to that and I see that the industry is very willing to also contribute and they are eager to enter into the market. So I think when we as government can be supportive, that should expedite the entrance and the penetration of the market with this new wideband technology. But as I said, there are still some challenges and hopefully we can come over of these challenges. Good. Thank you, Roland Pruniger. It was a pleasure to hear your outlook to the future. You'll be curious to see 10 years from now the 20th Motor Summit, how <laughs> the actual market development was uh, working. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you very much.